You're listening to the Live Fit Podcast with Glenn Johnson. Here, we'll talk about all things related to good health, fitness, food, fat loss, and the mind-body connection. Ah, uh, yes, this is the Live Fit Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Glenn Johnson, and this is episode 40. I am so excited about this episode, When Life Gives You Lemons with Tara Bell. This is an inspiring story about a woman who overcame depression and PTSD with the help of a dog, a diet, and exercise. Tara Bell Betts is my guest today. I wanted to talk to her because of her amazing story of 20 years of hardship followed by three years of being a shut-in with post-traumatic stress disorder and how she turned her life around. It's really an amazing story. You know, I talk to people all the time who say they can't stop eating too much or that they're not willing to give up the foods that are killing them and making them sick. But I think Tara's story of inspiration will help you realize that if she can do it, you can do it too. She's now 40 years old and in the best shape of her life. This year, she lost 70 pounds, ran a 5K obstacle course race, She can do handstands and is still going strong. She's tough, wise, and inspiring. But before I tell her story, I have something else I want to share with you. Periodically, I like to check in with some of my former clients to see how they're doing. I really want them to continue to be fit even after they're done with my program. I want them to succeed for life. I want them to live fit for life. And so I called up Lisa to see how she's been doing. I know that she's been doing some running races. She said she's doing great. I think what's helped me most is that I've been able to, especially in being kind of independent after going through Live Fit, has been you gave me a very comprehensive plan. You gave me something that had, I guess, uh, items I could follow, percentages, things that were, were just very easy for me to follow. I think I've been, I guess, tech, not really off the program, but technically not actively being monitored for a number of months now, and I really haven't gained any weight. My weight's been maintained, and, and that's really just been, you know, through through your listening and your guidance and um, giving me things that were pretty structured and simple. I've gone through trainers before, and, and they've always said, you know, well, reduce your carbs or reduce your sugar or, you know, increase your protein. And then when I would ask them for specific numbers to follow, they would say, well, just just do it, just decrease it, and it would be very general. So I would find that I was with them, I would be okay, and then afterwards I would gain weight again. And so with this, I kind, I have a much better understanding of when I put a plate together what, I sh- what it should look like. Thanks, Lisa. I really love hearing the confidence and the commitment coming out of her voice. She is much more stable and secure than she was regarding her fitness and nutrition habits when I started talking to her a year or so ago. And it this is why I do this. It it really warms my heart and makes me feel great about all the time and effort I put into this. If you would like to share your success story, please let me know. You can always find information about my programs at livefitlean.com. And now I want to share my interview with Tara Bell. She grew up a very normal person in a small town in eastern Canada, went to college, got married, and had a child. And that was where the normalcy ended. Let's hear her story. Tara? When I was uh, younger, I was in university. You know, I met my husband, and, and we had our first son. It didn't quite go as people would hope that it that it would go with their first child and um, he ended up being born quite prematurely. He was born at 25 weeks and uh, weighed a pound and three ounces. So he was quite sick and um, spent six months in the, uh, the NICU. It was a really, really difficult time. You know, he was very sick. He had bleeding in his brain, bleeding in his lungs, bleeding in, you know, a lot of his internal organs you know, they didn't know if he was going to make it. And that kind of went, you know, back and forth, back and forth for for six months until he finally came home. He weighed just under five pounds, so he was still a small baby, not even the size of a full-term baby when he was, you know, six months old. We thought that we were kind of, you know, going to be scot-free. You know, we were home and things were looking up. It didn't quite turn out that way. Mm. It seemed that he was very developmentally delayed, which we sort of expected because, 
you know, he was so small and so premature. Um, but as he got older, we started noticing, you know, a lot of things that he would do that were really, you know, atypical for, for children his age and just for children in general. You know, he would line up toys and everything had to be in, you know, groups of five. And so just through more testing that we had done, we found out that um, that he had autism. Mm. So that was that was quite sad for us, you know, it... Uh, We'd never known anybody with autism before. I think our only reference at the time was that Tom Cruise movie, Rain Man. And, oh, yeah. um, you know, so, you know, at that time, my, my son actually just turned 18. So it was quite a few years ago. Uh, and at that time, autism wasn't uh, really in the spotlight like it is now. So there wasn't a whole lot of information for us. We didn't know anybody with a child with autism. So we kind of went through it blindly, I guess. And everything was just new and and uh, so that was a hard adjustment. After that, he developed epilepsy. It was quite severe. Um, he had to be airlifted at one point to the IWK. He had a seizure that, that lasted, oh, geez, it was five hours, I think it was. Holy you know, cow. He ended, he, oh, yes, he ended up on a respirator for that. So, you know, we didn't know. It's just been always very unpredictable with him because of just all the stress on, on a relationship. Um, my husband and I ended up getting divorced. It's been a long road. Wow. Yeah, it certainly has. I'm sorry to hear that, Tara. Um, as a parent, I can only begin to understand what it must have been like, the worry, the stress, the daily turmoil and troubles. But she does get through it, and she does find a light at the end of the tunnel, and we're going to find out in a little bit what she did to bring herself out of it. But first I asked her a question, if she had been overweight all of her life or it's something that developed gradually. I wasn't actually. It, it didn't really start till I went to university and, you know, everybody starts and they have that famous, the frosh 15. You know, everybody gains 15 pounds, I guess. But for me, it was probably more like 20. Um, and then, of course, then I had my son right after and then, you know, the whole thing with, consoling yourself with a bag of Oreo cookies, you know what I mean, while you're right. sitting there. Um, so, yeah, so it was a gradual process. It wasn't something that, you know, just sort of happened all at once. It's just been over the years that, you know, the mm -hmm. pounds have just piled on, and all of a sudden I was 230 pounds. So, But that's pretty typical also, the weight coming on, going on gradually, and you don't really notice it. You yes. eat, you eat yeah. a bag of cookies, and you don't have an immediate response of weight gain. In other words, you don't look in the mirror and see 20 extra pounds on you right, right. then, but after Absolutely. those habits lasting for a year or so, then they do add mm -hmm. on. But of course, it's so gradual. It's just like you don't notice your hair growing. Yes, absolutely. As if all that wasn't enough, something else happened in her life that would make a devastating effect for the next three years and change her life forever. Yes. About four years ago now, I had gone through nursing and, you know, I was a nurse and had been a nurse for probably, oh, geez, I don't know, more than 10 years at that point. There was a woman that was missing, a young woman that was missing from our community. She had been missing for a week. The family was frantic, you know, looking for her. She was also a young mother. And I really felt an affinity with, with her story. And I guess people would, would think that, you know, you wish that if, if that were ever to happen to me, I would hope that people would come look for me too. Right. And so I volunteered um, to, to join the search party and to go search for her. I think I really thought that, you know, we would have a happy ending and that, you know, I'd even brought my first aid kit. Um, I thought maybe she was injured somewhere and that, you know, I could help being a nurse, that I could use my skills and help her. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, when we went to search that morning, we did end up finding her. Mm -hmm. And it was my search party of seven people. We found her in a garbage bag on the side of a dirt road in the middle of the woods. I want to skip the details of what Tara said here. Suffice it to say, it's not pretty. It's really amazing what humans can do to each other. It was probably one of the worst things that's, that's, uh, that's ever happened to me. Definitely that's one horrible. of the worst, the worst things that I've ever seen. You know, as a nurse, you, you see a lot of death as a nurse, but this was on a completely different, um, a completely different level. I mean, it was just, 
you can read about things like that and, and see it in a movie, but to see it with your own eyes is, is a completely different experience. That was a devastating story. I didn't want to go off in a different direction. I want to kind of keep us in place. And so next I asked her how that affected her. And she told us she acquired PTSD and didn't leave her house for the next three years. So because of that, I eventually um, developed PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. That affected my life greatly. The world just took on a completely different connotation to me, the way that I viewed the world and my safety within the world and, and other people. I didn't actually leave the house for over three years. Um, I would drive my kids to school and would come right back home, and um, that went on for three years. So wow. it was a very uh, sad time. So after three years, was it, what is, was it a gradual process that you started leaving the house, or were you just sitting around one day and said, hey, I got to get out of here? What, what happened? What changed? It was a gradual process. Um, one thing that really uh, changed things for me was that um, we, we got a dog, um, we had already had two dogs, but I'd done a lot of reading about um, soldiers that, you know, receive canine therapy. And so we got a German Shepherd, and um, she just is, she's she's fantastic, and she's just afforded me this level of security, and um, I just felt safe when I was with her. And so it it started gradually with her. You know, she would come in the car with me, and we would drive to the grocery store. You know, we might not get out of the car that day, depending on, you know, how I was feeling and how hypervigilant or whatever I was, I was feeling that day. But, um, just the fact that she was there just provided me with that level of security. And she's really what, um, what started this whole healing process for me. Good. Fantastic. Yeah. Dogs are well, they're man's and woman's best friend. They really are. I've, yeah, I've, I've experienced that and seen it and heard of it so many times. So it sounds like uh, the the real turn for the better came when you got that dog. It, it You know, she's just changed a lot for me, and um, I'm just so thankful for her. I mean, you know, because I had gone through a lot of different avenues to try and to try and cope with my PTSD, you know, medication, therapy, um counseling, you know, I had been through everything and um really things really started to change for me when when we got when we got that dog. I'm just so thankful for her because uh you know, I I had stopped living and uh yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Did you remarry? I didn't remarry. Um I do have a boyfriend that I've had for quite a few years. We live together. So, you know, Things have moved on in, in that way, and um, he was actually with me that day. I kind of drug him with me um, when we went to that search and rescue because I'm I'm a volunteer, and I love to volunteer for things and help people and uh, convinced him to come with me. And uh, yeah. so we were together. So that, that was good. That really brought us uh, closer together, I think, that we had experienced that, that trauma together, that, you know, we really understood where the other was coming from you know, because we were both there. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So, so things started turning around when you, when you got the dog, but what was, what was really the turning point when you, cause, cause now I, I'm looking at pictures of you in an adventure race and you're carrying a sandbag on your shoulders. You're crawling through muddy water, climbing up and over things and running. And so <laughs> you obviously are not depressed. You're obviously out of your house. Um, I, Looks like you're probably, um, the PTSD is behind you. So what was the turning point that really changed things? And, and what were the events that, that either precipitated it or, or happened while you were turning your life around? Well, um, you're right. This, this last year has probably been uh, one of the best years of my entire life. Um, I have completely changed my life around. Um, you know, my, my PTSD is, I don't know if you want to say it's in remission or whatever, however you want to say that, but, um, you know, I've, I've just really moved on and, um, I'm just so grateful for that. And really, I don't know if I can pinpoint any one thing. It was really a lot of, a lot of small things. Um, what, one big thing though, was that, um, was that I turned 40 this year 
And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a lot of friends that were turning 40 and everybody just seemed to be, you know, really depressed about it and, you know, oh, 40 and, you know, and I thought, you know, I don't want that to be me. I, I, I want 40 to be a good year. You know, I've, I've had this, these last three years have been terrible and, you know, I, I've basically stopped living and, and I want 40 to be a good year. And I went into, you know, the beginning of this year, um, of 2014, I really went into that this year with, with that mindset that this is going to be a good year for me. And, um, one of the things I did was that I set a goal, um, and that was that I wanted to participate in one of those adventure races. Everybody thought I was crazy because I was grossly overweight. Um, you know, I hadn't done anything in, in years. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought, you know, that's that's something that I want to do. That's that's a goal for me and um, something to work towards. And that's really how it started for me was that I had decided for myself that this was not going to be a year that was going to be, you know, sad or depressing, that um, I wanted these things for myself. And uh, so I started by, in January, um, I joined a weight loss group with my mother. And mm-hmm. um, it, it started that way. It started small, you know. Was that this last January of 2014? Was, yes, it was. Yeah. And so I started this, this going to this group with my mother. And, um, you know, they do weekly weigh-ins and, you know, kind of have a little pep talk, you know, then you go home. So that, that was okay. But then, you know, I went a step further and I thought, well, maybe I should, you know, kind of do some exercise added in with this too. So, um, you know, my mother and I started walking and, um, you know, it was hard at first. I hadn't done anything in a long, long time. And, you know, being at home for, for three years, you know, all I did was sit on the couch and watch movies and, you know, you, you start growing, um, you know, cause you just eat and cause mm-hmm. you're depressed and you gain weight and gain weight. And so it was hard. I, you know, I did a lot of reading and one of the really important things for me was, um, that not only changed my, my body and my relationship with food, but also changed the way that I felt was I started following, um, the paleo diet and, mm. um, the paleo diet, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but um, yes, I am. the principles behind that are basically, you know, that we've moved so far away from how our ancestors ate, but, you know, that accounts for a lot of diseases and, and things in us now. So um, I started following the paleo diet. So with that, there's, you know, no sugar, no grain, no dairy, no processed foods. And those are really things that I you know, completely relied on. I mean, I would get up in the morning and eat a bowl of rice for breakfast, you know, and I loved it. I loved that. I thought it was, you know, that was great, but it was just, it was killing me. And, um, I, I noticed a difference, you know, within the first, the first month that I just felt very, just a lot clearer mentally. And, um, just my body just, just felt better. Um, I had a lot of, you know, aches and pains and, you know, gallbladder problems and, you know, I had asthma and I was always wheezing all the time. And, you know, a lot of that was due to the fact, of course, that I was overweight, but also due to the fact of the things that that I was putting inside of my body. And I found that when I cut these things out, you know, the grains, the dairy, that I noticed a lot of these things started subsiding. And that was really... um, really one of the big things for me was, was the food and, you know, completely changing that to, to what I had eaten before. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that, that you don't fall off the wagon sometimes because people do. The paleo diet is, is a great diet. Um, but sometimes you do, you do, you know, you do fall off. But the thing is, is that, and I've, somebody said this to me today, the very wise man, he said, you know, success is in the straight line. And, um, it's very true. You know, this journey that I've been on this last year, you know, it hasn't all been a straight up, you know, upwards line. I have, I have failed a couple of times. You know, I have been weighed at, at my weight loss group and, uh, you know, maybe gained a pound. You know what I mean? It's not been all completely uphill. It's, it's sort of a, a crooked line, but it's mm-hmm. the general trend has been up. I think that's the thing that people need to, to focus on because I think people get discouraged, you know, they want everything 
well, first of all, they want immediate results. And that, that's a lie. When Anything that ever tells you that, you know, that a diet is going to be fast and it's going to be easy, you need to completely discount that because those, those are things that aren't true. And, um, but, you know, if you, if you stick with it and, you know, do your best. I, I know some people do like an 80-20 for paleo. Um, mm-hmm. For myself, I do strict paleo. That's, you know, that's all that I eat. And um, I feel really good. I, you know, when I do fall off occasionally and, you know, maybe have a slice of pizza or something, I find that I don't feel good. Um, I feel, I always say I feel like a bloated whale. And that's not a nice <laughs> thing to say maybe, but really that's how I feel. Um, because I right. feel so great when I follow the paleo diet. I just, I feel really fantastic. And uh, you really notice a difference when you start introducing those other things into your diet that, you know, you haven't eaten for six months. But that, that's been a really big one for me was, was following the paleo diet. This year alone, um, I've lost 70 pounds. Holy cow. Yeah. That's fantastic. Congratulations. I know. Thank you. You know, I have, I have two different programs, and one is pretty much the paleo diet. It, it gives you a eating plan for every single meal for an entire month. Okay. And the other one, the other one follows the zone. Are you familiar with the zone? I am a little bit, not not as much as paleo. Its premise is you should not eat more than 40% of your calories from carbohydrates at any one time, not over the course of the day, but at any one time you eat, whether you call it a meal or a snack, it doesn't matter. But there should be a near even mix of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And the reason for that is so you don't get these insulin spikes. If you don't have uh, too much glucose in your bloodstream, you don't get too much insulin, then you don't get all this stored form right. of carbohydrates, which is you know being deposited as fat for the most part, but it also can mm-hmm. cause other health problems such as diabetes. So that's one reason why paleo works. I'm glad that you found it. I'm glad it works for you. I, one thing I was going to ask you is you don't sound like one of those near religious zealots about paleo or your eating plan and or or even crossfit which is interesting because a lot of people it's it's nearly a religion to them how do, how do you feel or what's been your experience with that well i think as far as the eating is concerned is that um i think people need to find something that works for them because i, I know say weight watchers for instance you know, you have to weigh your food and measure your food and, you know, you can have half a cup of this and quarter of a cup of that. I know for me personally that that is not going to work for me because I, that is not something that I'm willing to do long term. I, I, you know, I could see myself doing that for, you know, a week or, you know, maybe two weeks, but for the rest of my life, I know I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to weigh things. I'm not going to measure things. So the reason that I like paleo is because as long as you stay within the confines of what you're, you know, what you're allowed to eat, I guess you could call it. You can eat, you know, as much as you want. Now, that's not saying that you're going to, you know, stuff your face because really, let's let's be honest, you know, how many apples can you eat? How many tomatoes <laughs> can you eat? You know what I mean? You can't eat that many, really. So it's I not can eat a lot of apples. Can you? See, I can't. I've eaten, I've eaten seven at one time before. <laughs> Now, that's never happened to me before. Um, so I know for me that paleo is something that I can maintain and keep going with. And, uh, you know, I've done it for a year now, and and I really enjoy it. Um, I find that food tastes differently when you take out, you know, the processed food and the sugar. When you take that out of your diet, things taste different. They sure do. Um, they really do. And, you know, you, you discover this new this love of food that... And it's not um, like this addictive love of food. It's just this, just that things taste good, you know, and, and you feel good after yeah. you eat them. And it's it just really changed my entire mindset, really. And I'm thankful for that. You feel physically and mentally good about eating yes, good food. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, a, that's, that's perfect. That's exactly how I feel. So let me, let me see if I can uh, summarize what I'm hearing from you. You were in a really down place. A lot of, a lot of bad things had happened to you and in your life and you, you just got sick of it. So you, you went to a, a weight loss group with your mother. So you had some support there with the group and with your mother. Then Mm -hmm. you started walking and then you decided to try CrossFit. Is that correct? I started with a local gym, um, with the YMCA. I started going to that, um, 
I would do little classes like um, like Zumba and and um, step aerobics, that sort of thing. And um, the more that I would read about paleo, um, the more I started finding out about CrossFit because CrossFit and paleo kind of go hand in hand. And, um, you know, I had no idea what CrossFit even was. And I thought, you know, I wonder if that's something that maybe I should do. So um, I found our, our one of our local CrossFit gyms and started uh, going to their prep class, which is something that you have to do before you can actually join the gym. You have to take their their prep class that shows you, you know, all the lifts and, you know, how to be safe. Okay. And so I did that, and I have found a community of people that are – they're just fabulous. They're supportive and encouraging and enthusiastic. And it's really unlike on anything that I've ever done before. Um, it's almost like a team sport. You know, they want everybody to do well. Um, it's not a competition, you know, who can lift more than who, um, who can be done faster than who. It's everybody is rooting for everybody else. We want everybody to do well. Paleo and CrossFit, those are those are the two things of everything that I've done this year that has, you know, encouraged me the most along in this journey that I've taken. And um, it's just a, a really unbelievable community of people. And I'm so, so grateful and so thankful that, that I found them because they're just so supportive. Like I said, they want everyone to do well. And it's, I guess you have to be a CrossFitter to understand that, I guess, because a lot of people, you know, they look at CrossFit and they think, oh, you know, oh my gosh, what is that? Or, you know, we kind of dress funny and we wear knee socks and, you know, there's reasons for all of this, but it's, it's just, it's a great thing. And I, I, I really love it. I just love it. I've even heard it referred to as a cult. (laughs) (laughs) You know, people make jokes about that, but I think it's because it's something that affects people so deeply and changes their lives that, you know, how can you not be excited about something about that like that, you know? Yeah, if it's I something agree. that's I really agree. changed something for you, I mean, of course, you want to talk about it and you want to get your friends to come with you. And, you know, I, I, think, I think they just want you to be quiet about it sometimes, but... You know, you're just so excited about it because it's just really changed things for you. It changes. Lifting weights is one of those things that it's very empowering. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, it makes you feel like, like, wow, I just did that. You know, I picked that up and I lifted that over my head. I did that. You know, and it's a great feeling for somebody. It's, it makes you feel capable, you know, yeah, it does. and um, it makes you feel strong and it makes you feel good about yourself. And, uh, you know, couple that with this great team atmosphere and, you know, all the energy that, you know, that's present every day when you come into the gym. I mean, it's just a really great life changing experience. And I'm just so thankful, you know, that I found that. Well, that's fantastic. I, I, I've heard pretty much the same story from dozens of other people. I've uh, done CrossFit a few times, but it's not something I do on a regular basis. I'm more of a mm-hmm. cyclist, which leads me to my next question. Do you do any cardio other than what they do in CrossFit with the, with the rower? I do do some running on my own at home. I'm not a huge fan of running. Um, I find mm-hmm. running very difficult, but I still do it. And, mm-hmm. you know, when I first started off, I think I ran for 90 seconds. I believe is my very first attempt. Um, and now I can run for, I can do 5k. Um, I've done, um, I did a obstacle course race this year. Um, that was 6k and with 18 obstacles, I've done another, a short one, a 3k, you know, and that's for somebody that absolutely hated running, started off very small, but running is one of those things that if you, you know, keep up at it, that's possible to, to get good at it. You know, and it's free too. It's you know, you don't oh. even have to. It's not some it's cheap, free, and easy. Exactly. So that's that's something that I've done too. I do continue to go to the gym a little bit. A lot of times, it's because I, I like some of the classes, like Zumba. Um, you know, so that's cardio too. But uh, but CrossFit is really my main my main exercise, I guess. I I go 
I try and go five days a week. Um, I started off when I first started, I could only do two. That was my, mm-hmm. that was my maximum. But now I've worked up to, I can go five days a week. And, um, you know, I, I've just surprised myself with, you know, the things that I've been able to do. I mean, I can almost deadlift my own body weight. And that's just such an amazing thing for me. And it's, you know, and I can do a handstand and I can, I'm I'm working my way up to doing pull-ups and, you know, just all these really great things that I never ever thought I could do any of this stuff. You know, I'm 40 years old and I was, you know, 230 pounds and, you know, I've shed all this weight and I've just, I've completely changed my life. And, you know, I never, ever thought back in January when I first started this, that, you know, that any of this could be possible for me, but, but it is, it's, yeah. it's really true. Pull-ups are tough. It, they really are. Well, you know what? I'm still working my way up to those. I'm doing negatives to try and to try and okay. build that strength up because it's really hard. I put a bar in my house actually, so every time I go through that doorway, that I have to do five of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know to try and build up that strength to do that. So it's just great. I mean, it's it's like being a kid again. You know, you get to do all these wonderful yeah. things and. It's I don't know. I'm very happy. I'm, I, my life has completely changed. I mean, if I would have looked back, you know, from two years ago, where I was at that point, I never thought that I would be standing where I am right now. And there's That's been so amazing. many people along the way that have helped me get there. What an inspirational story. You know, as you were as you were talking just now, I was reflecting on the beginning of our conversation. It kind of was glum and depressing and you still, you, you know, the story of your, your, your son and then your divorce and then your, your experience with the lost woman. I'm thinking, Oh boy, this is going to be a depressing show. And then you found the light, you started coming out of it and your life became perky and you're, you're smiling and happy and moving and leaving the house and exercising. You lost 70 pounds. And where are you going from here? Oh my gosh really the the sky's the limit um i'm hoping this year um my intention is to run a spartan race um i've always wanted to do that that's um a step up from the race that i did this year um for my 40th birthday so so next year i'll be 41 so um wow that's that's my that's my goal um you know i i want to learn how to do toes to bar at crossfit and i want to do a one-handed handstand and you know, there's just, there's so many Jeez. things that I want to do and I'm going to get there. I don't doubt it in the slightest. And I, I hope you update me when you reach these, these uh, milestones. So Tara, thank you once again for talking to us. Um, I, I know that your story is going to be inspirational because honestly, from, from what I've received from hearing from you, if you can do it, anybody can do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is, I'm just a regular person. So yes, absolutely. Terrific. Well, once again, thank you and you have a great day. Thank you, Glenn. Well, that was my interview with Tara Bell Betts. I know it started out a little bit glum and it it was a sad story and she definitely had some hard times, but the focus here is that she recovered. She pulled herself out of it. She had all kinds of things going against her. She had no life. She was shut into her house, locked in for three years with PTSD, and she overcame it. She had help from a dog. She had help from lots of friends and relatives. So she definitely had a support system. But nonetheless, that support system wasn't enough until she made up her mind to make the change that would make her better and to get out and conquer the world and stop being a victim of it and a victim of her circumstances. So I applaud you, Tara, and I hope other people can borrow your energy and your empowerment and make the most out of their situation. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Live Fit Podcast. Please keep those reviews coming in in iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You can subscribe, read show notes, articles, resources, and learn more about weight management programs at livefitpodcast.com. Once again, thanks for listening, and always remember to live fit.